Sinn Féin's vision is for Ireland to play a constructive role in the wider world, committed to diplomacy, humanitarianism, peace building and cooperation with other states on the global challenges including poverty, world hunger, climate change, com conflict resolution and migration. An independent foreign policy and military neutrality are crucial to allow Ireland to play that important world, role in the wider world. We should be proud of our military neutrality and, and resist attempts by some in government to recast it as a weakness or a failing. The legacy of Irish neutrality is our role in working for nuclear non-proliferation, in humanitarianism, in contributing to the drafting of the Convention on Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, in peacekeeping, and in the proud record of our United Nations peacekeepers in the Lebanon, in the Congo, in Chad, South Sudan and elsewhere. It has been our contribution to making the world a better and safer place. Being proud of our neutrality means being proud of those who served on UN peacekeeping missions, including those who fought and died in the Naiba ambush, those who fought and whose bravery was long recognised at the siege of Jadotville, all of those who died on UN peacekeeping duty, including Private Sean Rooney, who was killed in December last year. Sinn Féin are proud of those who have served, served this country, and we are proud of Ireland's history in seeking peace rather than conflict. We therefore welcome any opportunity to participate in public discourse on foreign security and defence policies. Such a debate has been sorely lacking over the past number of decades. Irish governments have made important, often crucial decisions with very little engagement with the Irish public and often even with minimal over Oireachtas debate. Indeed, governments have had to be taken to court in order to allow the Irish people to have their say on fundamental foreign policy shifts. Sinn Féin welcomes debate because we believe that Ireland has a positive story to tell and still has an important impact to make. The starting point to any such discourse must be a recognition that military neutrality has served us well. It is for this reason that we want to enshrine the principle of neutrality in the Irish Constitution and within the EU treaties. Of course, it's easy to say that we support neutrality. Most members of this House would claim to do so, albeit an increasing number of government deputies are willing to acknowledge that that's not their position. It's less easy to define what neutrality actually means for a country like Ireland in the 21st century. That needs to change. Those of us on the left and others who value neutrality have, over the past two decades, been very good at articulating what we are opposed to, not so good at setting out the positive and constructive role that neutrality can help Ireland play internationally into the future. It is arguable, indeed, that no government has clearly articulated what Irish neutrality means to them since the time of Frank Aiken. Aiken, of course, was a leading figure during the revolutionary period whose later work defined Irish foreign and defence policy for generations. The position of neutrality adopted by Aiken and many others from that revolutionary era shouldn't surprise us. For they, they understood and appreciated the words of General Sherman who said that it is only those who have neither fired a shot nor heard the shrieks and groans of the wounded uh, who cry aloud for more blood, more vengeance, more desolation. War is hell. It was Ireland's position as a neutral, as well as our unique experience at a European level of colonialism that has allowed Ireland to earn a reputation as one of the preeminent contributors to peacekeeping in the globe. Because Irish neutrality has never meant isolationism, in disengagement or disinterest in the world. It has been a positive force for good. It has allowed this small country to play a bigger role than many others with much greater wealth and much bigger military machines. That is the legacy of those who first defined neutrality. Our objective must be to build on that legacy for generations to come. That is why Sinn Féin welcomes increased public discussion on foreign defence and security policies. It is why we are disappointed that the government's proposed forum is less about public discussion than it is about an attempt to reshape public opinion. Government doesn't intend to provide a role for the opposition in the Taunish's proposed so-called consultative forum. This is an important point because decisions on foreign policies are different to in other areas. When one government sets up to international agreements, for example, a successor government can't always simply change position without damaging our international reputation. Therefore, government can't simply exclude opposition 
Tanish, the government can't simply exclude opposition from important information and discussions that could have an impact for generations to come. Of course, in any public discussion, we will vociferously advocate for neutrality, and in doing so, we will follow the long-standing position of Republicans, trade unionists and other progressives over many generations. And that is not to deny that the world and, inter and the international security context has changed. The illegal Russian invasion of Ukraine has changed the world and has changed it forever, arguably. In the midst of this world-defining moment, it is not only right, it is incumbent upon all of us in this House and beyond to reflect upon our responsibility to safeguard our country and our citizens, to reflect on how we uphold the principles of democracy and the rule of law, and how we contribute positively to the world beyond our borders through humanitarian and development aid and through peacekeeping, and through acting as agents and facilitators of peace where conflict does exist. And it is here that opinion diverges. For my part, upon reflection, I am as convinced in the imperative of Irish neutrality as I was prior to Russia, um, Russia's criminal invasion of Ukraine. I remain as committed to Ireland's participation in UN peacekeeping missions and enforcing United Nations Security Council resolutions. I remain as proud as before of Ireland's humanitarian record, a record reinforced by the non-lethal aid and wider support that we have provided to the Ukrainian people. Others of course, see the invasion of Ukraine as justification to take another course. Many of those already conveyed almost a sense of embarrassment and shame in Irish neutrality. And the truth is that over the past two decades at least, governments have undermined Irish neutrality. And they did this in three ways, in my view. Firstly, governments have moved us away from having an independent foreign policy. So it is that the strong, and rightfully so, government rhetoric and actions regarding Ukraine, being as they are in tune with larger Western states, are not matched in areas where they are equally deserving, such as Palestine. Independent foreign policy meant that this country led the way in the international pressure that brought the downfall of apartheid South Africa. Independent foreign policy must mean that we do the same to end Israeli apartheid in Palestine. Secondly, successive governments have overseen the systemic underinvestment in our defence forces. We are unable to monitor, never mind defend, our own airspace or skies, and we are unable to secure ourselves against modern threats. Numbers within the defence forces have reached critically low levels. The decades-long undermining of our defence forces is shameful. And thirdly, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael governments have used membership of NATO's Partnership for Peace and PESCO as mechanisms to further undermine neutrality. And these actions impact on each other. When Irish ministers sign up to international missions, even with those with UN mandates, they often do so at the cost of Irish defence. When the Irish Navy rightfully participates in the upcoming uh, mission in the Mediterranean, there will be periods when there is just a single Navy vessel operating in Irish waters. And the government responses, sometimes contradictory responses, to media reports of a secret deal with the British government to have the RAF secure our airspace, our airspace again starkly points to an ongoing policy of signing up to international military missions while ignoring the incapacity to address our own domestic defence needs. Sinn Féin understands the obligations of government in respect of agreements made with international partners. That is why I have said that in government we won't withdraw Irish troops from pre-committed operations and exercises. But in terms of future decisions, we will take a different approach than that of the current government. That approach will have the unequivocal starting point that we are a neutral and independent state and with the objective of building upon our proud tradition of participating in UN peacekeeping missions and in supporting conflict resolution across the globe. The alternative trajectory is one that would place Irish Defence Forces personnel under the command of an EU military structure whose deployment could occur without the approval of the Dáil government or UN mandate as required by the Triple Lock. And that has been the stated ambition of many within the EU long before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and it is the natural outworking of the stated position of those within Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil who want to undo our traditional military neutrality. It is the ongoing failure of government parties to accept the premise that Irish neutrality has served us well that has led to some cynicism in the proposed Consultative Forum on International Security. Many, myself included, feel that the forum is a blatant attempt to undermine that neutrality. 
Should government wish to establish a consultative mechanism for debate outside of a referendum, the appropriate forum would be a citizens' assembly. The proposed format of the consultative forum minimises the input of the public and opposition parties. Those contributed, contributing will be appointed by government and their contributions will lead to a report authored solely by the forum's chair, also appointed by government. Sinn Féin will, of course, engage with the forum in any way that we can, and we will outline our clear positions on Irish international security policy, including reiterating that the public should be consulted via the pro proven framework of a citizens' assembly, leading to a referendum to enshrine neutrality in the constitution. That further entanglement of the Irish state or defence forces in international security organisations or frameworks should be referred by the Dáil to the Joint Oireachtas Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence for considered and detailed scrutiny. And that the rebuilding of our defence forces is a priority obligation on government and that a, pre and a prerequisite um, to doing so is addressing the current recruitment and retention crisis. And that requires as a first step the immediate implementation of the Working Time Directive. Last Concorla, there are always those who seek to misconstrue commitment to neutrality with isolationism. What they miss is that it has been our neutrality and our independent foreign policy that led President Biden in this chamber to recognise Ireland's moral authority around the world. That moral authority is something worth cherishing because it is the legacy of people such as former Minister Sean McBride, a man who also bore witness to our own revolutionary period and who is later international chair of Amnesty International, a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize and a signatory to the European Convention on Human Rights. Those of that generation will have recalled that famous banner hanging from Liberty Hall, we serve neither King nor Kaiser but Ireland. And it was with that ethos Ireland as an independent state, operating an independent foreign policy as endorsed and respected by the international community, that we can advance the legacy of delivering humanitarian aid to countries under brutal and, brutal and callous invasion, such as Ukraine, that we can build on the renowned reputation of our defence forces in UN peacekeeping missions, and that we can make a stand for the Palestinian people and others repressed through occupation and apartheid. That is the vision of neutrality that Sinn Féin will bring to this and every debate, and it is a vision I am proud to champion. Because I have to say, looking across this chamber at those parties who have been in government for all of my life, I see no vision for Irish neutrality because none has been espoused since the time of Aiken. And I see no vision for a foreign policy or international security policy other than to follow the lead of others. We, we on the other hand, want Ireland to lead the way. We want to rebuild our defence forces so that we can protect our neutrality, defend and monitor our skies and seas, and protect ourselves from modern threats, including cyber attacks and hybrid attacks. We want to give our defence forces the respect they deserve so that they, they and our diplomatic corps can continue to be missionaries of a small nation that makes a big difference for the better all over the world. We want Ireland to be a voice against oppression, poverty and war. We want Ireland to be an international champion for peace and disarmament and multilateralism. Last Cancora, we want Ireland to use our history to ensure that this planet has a better future. Gormaigat.